Have you ever wondered how to build mega builds? And I mean, really build mega builds? Well, I have over 37,000 days in my hardcore world and I'm fitting to show you guys exactly that process. Now there's quite a bit to it when it comes down to mega builds and I'm gonna try to break it down as much as I possibly can for you guys in this series where I'm gonna show you guys the process of how I build all the mega builds of my world. One of them being focal points. What do you want your focal point to be? Does it have a story? Does it have a theme? And can you work around that? Another major thing that you guys need to consider is location. Where do you want to locate a build in your world? And how do you want it to basically present itself? But to go a little bit off of location, let me show you guys a little bit something else. Regions can equally be as important as locations. Obviously, you want to build up different regions of your world with different themes behind them. This is my Skulk land. So we have ourselves some castles here with the Skulk all on the ground with bone dragons and a factory here that's a little bit more dystopian style. But most of you guys are probably wondering how to get all the resources to build up these mega projects. Well, I like the snowball method. What's the snowball method, you ask? Well, the snowball method, since I don't AFK, it's a little bit more complicated. It means that I had to plan out my builds weeks out from the actual build. That means that I have to start slowly accumulating resources a couple weeks away from a build. Now, of course, we all have our farms and everything like that that are going to give us resources. But another major thing that I like to utilize are villagers. Currently right now, I don't know if I have anything in here. I am currently smelting up smooth quartz and I'll show you guys exactly why later in today's episode. But with all that out the way, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I go about building up major builds. All of them start off with beacons, which could take me upwards to five hours to set up. And not on only that, but there's a lot of line work ahead of us as well. But I wanna show you guys a little bit of that process. These episodes will get better over time. So bear with me. If you guys like the episode, please leave a like. If you guys want to see some more, consider subscribing. But let's get into it. Now you guys can see I got a little bit of the bridge and the front facade now fully done and mapped out. So I have a little bit of a direction I'll go in. Now I will say I definitely prefer building like this because it gives me a little bit more of a sense of scale and size so I can kind of work out the builds a little bit better, uh, which is nice. And then you'll notice on the side here, I'm kind of working out a little bit of the angles and then working my way over towards the tower. Now that I have the shape of my towers, I'm going to start working out a little bit of the palette here. So I'm trying to go with more of like a blue and gold look because I want to go for something with the Bosnian flag that's going to go really well with the tower, which I think is going to really pop. But that's also why I'm lapis poor. Now at this stage, we've definitely fast forward a little bit here. I've got the towers in place and now I'm starting to put in a little bit more of my details and starting to map out where I want to put things in this build. So taking this guy over to the next layer here, we've got ourselves some moons. Not fully done yet. I still got to make them a little bit more 3D defined, but I'm going to fill out the roofs now. So there's that. Now that we have the moons filled out, I also filled out the sun and I wanted to show you guys this in shaders because it really pops. Okay, so I would say that we got a lot of the line work done when it comes to the yellow concrete, but slight problem. Obviously, we're going to go over this here in just a moment. I'm completely out of yellow concrete when we're going to need a heck of a lot more. So we're going to restock up on that. And I'm a little bit nervous about the lapis. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's going to be a la enough lapis to basically finish our roof here. We need to head back to the base and we need to get ourselves some more yellow concrete, which I'm not sure if we have any yellow dye to be perfectly honest, but we'll have to check the storage room and see what we got. Here's our yellow concrete. And it looks like we have none. And yellow dye, definitely not enough. So looks like I'll be over here for a little while. Well, I think this will be enough yellow dye, I'm hoping. But now we're going to have to go grab ourselves some more sand and some more gravel so we can actually make the concrete. Back to the storage room. And honestly, I'd say we have enough on hand. But before we make a bunch of concrete and get back to work, there's something I want to show you guys at night. And it's that right there. Now that I think it's actually dark enough, let me show you guys what this looks like with shaders on. Because there's something that I'm working towards with this build, and I'm going to explain that here in a minute. Take a look at that sun. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So let me let me hide my HUD. 
and let me show you guys a little bit about what I'm trying to work on for this build here in particular. So, you'll notice that I've got a lot of the lighting around here kind of accentuating the lines of the build. That's something I definitely want to improve on. I want to try to use lighting to my advantage to try and bring out the build a little bit more in a different perspective. But I absolutely love how this build is focused around photosynthesis and bees because I feel like they kind of go hand in hand in a very artistic way. And if I never went with photosynthesis, we would have never ended up with a really cool sun like this. So what's next? Well, there are a couple things that I would like to get done in today's stream. One of them being the top part of this castle right here. I kind of want to figure out a way that I want to try to maybe hold the sun or maybe have like something like mounting the sun or something like that. But while we do a little bit more work on this and we do a little bit more resource gathering for the castle and try to shape it up a bit more, I would actually love to focus in this area down here. So today's stream, I'm going to be building a little bit of a giant black widow spider that's going to be going right here. And the vision is when I'm down here looking up from the web, so this is going to be the epicenter of like where all the sp spiders are at and all that kind of cool stuff. We're going to be able to see the really cool hourglass figure of the spider. I'll show you guys it with shaders too. It's got a really cool shadowing effect from down here, but I want to put a really cool, creepy Black Widow spider kind of stretching its way out from underneath here. And then once I get the spider in place, we can start working a little bit more on the web. What do you mean by the web? Well, there's a couple things that I need to address here when it comes to the web. One of them being the bridge right here. I need to kind of work the web up here a little bit to make it look like it's kind of part of the bridge. I need to get rid of all this andesite and You'll probably notice it's all built out of wool. I do have my lightning rods in place, which is super handy. Obviously, don't want to have this stuff burning down. Although, if these were real spiders, I would definitely be burning this place down. Anyways, uh, I want to do a little bit of weathering. And let me show you guys what I mean by weathering. Bone blocks. So, I feel like bone blocks are going to be a really good way to make the uh, web look like it's been here for like a little while. So, let me show you guys a little bit of this. I should have brought some shears off. Lovely. <laughs> hold on hold on can i get this right okay so we're gonna come in here okay let's just get rid of a little bit of this wool here and then i can show you guys a little bit about what i mean by about weathering the web a little bit kind of giving a little bit of color a little bit of texture i plan to do this throughout the web i just kind of need to know exactly what i'm going to be doing here oh there's no flipping floor there well this is a big fail um, what I mean a little bit here. So if I work my way up here now and we're looking down at the web. It's very, very like you don't really notice it that much, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of discoloration in that web right there. So I'll be focusing a little bit on making that happen. Not to mention when we get our black widow in here, I feel like this web is very, very flat. So I want to kind of sag the web underneath the black widow giving the web a little bit of weight behind it. It's making the spider feel a little bit more big. But all of that will be addressed later today in today's stream. For those of you guys who don't know, I do live stream all of these builds over on Twitch. So if you guys want to see the whole process behind the scenes, you guys can feel free to stop by and catch a stream. But anyways, I got work to do. And it's a good thing that we have ourselves a concrete farm that we just built not long ago. So we're going to take this yellow concrete we're going to be popping it into our machine right here. Let me just kind of pop this there. And we have a bunch of black, uh, a bunch of black concrete that I'm going to take out here in just a moment. But we're going to get a lot of this concrete in here so we can convert this into our concrete now. Looks like we're going to have to get through a little bit of this before we get into our yellow concrete. So we're going to run this machine. Hopefully this will be enough uh, TNT since we don't duplicate TNT around here. So uh, I'm going to run this and we'll see what we can get. So this is all the concrete that we're going to be utilizing for the castle. This should hopefully be enough. And then we got a bunch more in the system for whenever we need any more so we can run those later. But for now, I got myself a little bit of a box ready to go here. So, E. So that's roughly what I'm thinking for the size of the Black Widow that we're going to be going with today. So we take a little bit of a better look at this. I feel like most of the volume of a Black Widow is more going to be with its legs. And I think this is going to look really cool. Hopefully the positioning is well here and we're going to like kind of elevate it up off the spider web. 
and we'll obviously round it out over time. But if we give ourselves a little bit of a template, then we can work with that. But for right now, we need to work on more of the sizing of the spider first. So, all right, now we've got a little bit of the spider outline from down here. Honestly, it's probably the best angle for that. We're gonna be putting the hourglass right in here. But before we do that, we've got a couple things that we need to do. And that is make it actually 3D. That way we can probably gonna elevate it up off the ground and then make our legs go uh, go down a little bit here. So I'm probably gonna maybe go up by three blocks, maybe five blocks, maybe five blocks. We'll figure that out as we go. So I'm gonna bring it up by five blocks here just by simply just tracing it on over pretty much. Just seeing what we got going on here and then we'll trace it on up from here. Coming across and over here. So now we've elevated the spider up by five blocks which I think five blocks would be perfect because then that'll give us those really long reaching arms from when we're moving on. All right, now that we have a little bit of the thorax done up here a little bit, elevated up, I'm gonna put the legs coming out of the thorax. I think this is a good size, but I need to work on the body of the spider itself. We haven't obviously made it all blacked out and put the hourglass on it yet. That's just because I wanna be able to actually count where we're going with a lot of this. So now to kind of shape and mold the body here a little bit. Now that we have a little bit of the thorax and a little bit of the body done up and we have the spider outlined from down here you can see it from up top too i need to elevate the legs to make it match with the rest of the spider now where we can put a little bit of the uh the arches into the legs now bringing it a little bit more to life so the top portion of the body is going to take a little bit more work but we're going to start connecting up our legs and then we'll start blacking out the spider and then of course put the hourglass on there it's kind of hard to see, but I think I got a little bit of the legs elevated. I got a lot of black concrete. So now we're going to start turning this thing into an actual spider. And then we'll figure out the hourglass shape here in a bit. So let's start doing that. Well, we have the legs in now, and I think I love the legs. We're going to start working on the body now, but looking at the silhouette, it definitely looks cool. All right. Now that we got the entire spider blacked out, we even got a little bit of the hourglass on its stomach or its thorax. We could fly up you can see like the defining quality of what an actual black widow is but now we're going to texture the spider a little bit because it'll obviously lost quite a bit of texture so i'm gonna come in here with like some black wool and maybe some coal and see what we could do here all right now that we got the entire spider blacked out with a little bit of texture it's kind of hard to bring out texture especially when it's all like super dark and i want to keep it dark now for the most challenging part, arguably, is going to be the face of the spider. So we can give it some cool fangs, some eyes. How we're gonna go about that, I don't know yet. Okay. I think we figured out a face for the guy. So eight eyes, just like a Black Widow would have. Gave it some cheeky fangs as well, right there. And a little bit of a scar to just kind of bring out a little bit of its face and then also made these eyes look like they were dead. I think this thing looks absolutely awesome. Plus from afar, when you were looking at it, you can kind of see a little bit of the stuff. These are micro blocks for those of you guys who are probably wondering. I get those guys who are wandering traders. But anyways, yeah, this is the Black Widow. All right, now that we got the spider done and everything's all lit up with candles, we're going to be shifting our focus towards the bridge here. So I want to create a little bit of a dividing line right here. I don't know if it's going to be roses, but there's going to be some flower right here that's going to divide up the bridge so we have two sections here we got a little bit of water and i might even put like little gaps between the moss that way we can kind of like see through there and then i'm gonna have cascading waterfalls cascading off of the side kind of keeping the spiders away kind of like down the water spout type deal and make it look a little bit more dilapidated okay so i think we got a little bit more of the bridge done here i've lowered the moss down a little bit and we're currently working on these little gargoyles up on the side Got some honey pools right here. We got some lights hidden in there as well. And I'm gonna have water basically cascading off of here down into there, like we said before. So now just comes the time of like arching these slabs on over and then we'll probably put chains and then lamps as well. I think that'll look really nice. Quick one intermission from the bridge. We got ourselves a wandering trader and we got a brand new pack also hooked up here. So for those of you guys who are wondering how I get micro blocks in the world, you're about to find out. So, this guy should have a bunch of brand new blocks. Please, please, please have boot. And it worked! All right, perfect. So, we have Gladys. We have Night Sky. We have a Furnace. 
We have an astronaut. And we have Retro Mario. You can buy other little blocks here too, but that's all we got for this one. So let me lay these guys out for you guys real quick. So, so we can take a little bit of a better look at this. Okay, so Retro Mario, boom. Straight out of 2-bit Mario or 8-bit Mario, whatever the heck you want to call it. We have an astronaut, which I thought was extremely cool. This is how I breathe life into my, uh, into my world. Gladys, I believe is from Portal. And two more. We have a furnace. I thought this was really cool looking block. And we got ourselves the starry night sky, which I thought was also a really cool decorative block. So that is the lineup for today's episode for microblocks. Yeah. All right. Now we're just going to come through here and we're going to place the, uh, the first block wrong like that. And then we're just going to do that all the way down here. And I'll show you guys what this thing looks like at night because it should kind of glow over top of the honey, which is going to look really cool. So we'll get all of our diorite walls in here. Like so. I like the diorite too because I feel like it kind of brings out a different uh, color of white. I'm trying to avoid using chains because I don't feel like the chains work as well with this build. We can come down like this. Like that. And then as we fly up and look down at the bridge, put on some shaders. You'll notice like a nice warm glow where all the honey is at, which I definitely don't want to get rid of. So I would love to keep it like that moving forward because it looks very, it looks very inviting, very warm looking like that, you know? But I think that's all the time that we're going to have for today. Let me know how you guys like the bridge. Let me know how you guys like the spider, Scarlet, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.